you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. So I I um I already started recording just in case because I want to maximize our time. You know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't hear what you said. I said I already started recording because I want to maximize our time. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. So um, basically, I'm just gonna jump in, let you know how, what my background is on it. So I saw your your web series. I'm I'm here with oh I'm here with two other people. One of them is Mr. Composition. He's an MC that writes fiction, and then Frankie Michelle. She's a super awesome. Um, Hi guys. Yeah. Hey. Uh, super awesome blogger. And um. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. And shout out to everyone who's listening to the podcast. You guys are also sort of in the room. Anyway, uh, Mr. Composition <laughs> Mr. Composition shared your, your piece of work with me and it was really uh, cool. And I just wanted to start it off with like how did you uh, how did you come up with that project and like decide to execute it? And did you put the team together? Okay, that's two questions. That's enough. <laughs> Did you have different directors for the whole thing, or did you direct it? No, so the director is the wonderful Clarence Williams of course. Um, okay. We went to college together, um, and so I just I knew that you and I we I like he had done a web series called Redwood Time uh, with my friend Carter Redwood, which was such a funny, it was like a like a it was just amazing. And so I asked him to, to come and direct on that episode, and he did. That's super cool. Okay. Very cool. I think I, I cut you off, but I, I think we sort of answered that first question. Um, with the team, though, that's kind of cool. And we talk about mental health and balance all the time. It's, uh, yeah, anyone who does anything, especially this kind of stuff, there has to be a lot of balance involved, especially with, um, you know, putting a team together. It's easy to not be able to work together with people, but that's kind of not an option when you're working on a project like this. How do you kind exactly, of, yeah. yeah, so how do you kind of make sure <laughs> that you you can um, how do you how do you pick the people you work with? Well, I, a lot of the people that were on the team were uh, people that I went to school with, um, so that I, that, that I was friends with, that I see all the time, we always get drinks for coffee, and so uh, there was like a trust there as far as like my executive producer, Sandra Chapman, my director, Clarence Williams, um, the fourth is my costume director, and my costume designer, Effie Turkson, who is my line director, actually. Um, so it's, it's like a lot of it was just like people that I knew. And then the, the other parts of it really were um, prayer and just like divine appointments, essentially. Like with my yeah. uh, DP, Dylan Dugan, who is also like just so talented, I had put a, a post out on like a Facebook group, like, hey, I'm looking for a DP. Um, it's about therapy for guardian angels which was like the original title, uh, you know, who's interested. And all these people messaged me and they had fine reels. And then 
I picked someone, and then Dylan messaged him the day after, and I, something in me said you should just message him and say, like, you love him, because his reel was amazing. I was like, yeah. I love your reel, but I already picked someone. I hope we can work together in the future. And then I, it didn't end up working with the other DP, and so Dylan kind of came on and helped me produce it for a while before Kendra came on um, the project. So, like, a lot of it was just, like I said, just like going off of, like, feelings of, of, of I like this person personally, and I know how they work. A lot of, I went to college for drama, and so a lot of my friends are in this industry um, that I've known for, you know, seven plus years. And yeah. so, yeah, a lot of recommendations and, and, and knowing and trusting, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay, very cool. I'm gonna get one. We're gonna get one question from Mr. Composition, then one from Frankie. Mr. Composition. Yeah. Hello, hello. Um, this is <laughs> super cool speaking with you. I literally had saw a post about a uh, new Afro futurism, you know, thing, and I was just like, "What is this?" And so now I'm speaking with you. It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I super. <laughs> Yeah, like I had seen, um, I think there was seven, I think I seen five out of the seven and what I had seen so far is um, I love the way that you, you know, you have Creepy Charlie and you know, the you're all about, you know, empowering him being himself, you know, and you know, it it was very interesting the way that it was blurred together as far as with the different issues that we struggle with as far as you know black people in america and then also the emotional trauma of black men like i feel like that isn't really spoken about and the fact that it was chosen to be a young uh black kid you know and just the weirdness about it like you know i don't know how many people want to admit at 12 like how weird that they are you know even though if they're not you know that way right now and so when um my question is um was the original intent to make it like a, a afrofuturism thing or was it um what drew you to want to be able to because you have like you said you have the religious themes you have the mental health themes what as far as the development of the episode as far as even the the minutes like they're not all they're all each individually their own thing like they're not consistent as far as like seven minutes you know one will be three you know so what was like the idea behind doing that sure so so I originally wrote, like, there's four angels. When I decided to, like, move from it being improv and, like, really silly and kind of moving it to be more resonant and um, serious, I, like, I wrote, there's four angels, and I wrote 40 episodes. And so each angel kind of had, um, like, a thing that they were really passionate about. Um, so, like, one angel was really passionate about, like, like, the plight of black women. Another one was, like, really passionate about, uh, like, black boy joy and, like, it's sort of the quirkiness that comes from, um, like a little boy who was grown up in this like in this time and and who like loves uh, like things that um, that not all you know people that stereotypically boys don't like and so basically when I decided to just do one angel I took my favorite episodes and favorite scripts of each angel kind of compiled them to fit within the voice of Raz um, and the funniest like out of all the guardian angels humans creepy child was the funniest one it was kind of Raz and and so I kind of got paired together. And so I, I, I started to think about, you know, like, with this particular hippie, like, angel and this creepy boy, what things are important to them? Um, and so, yeah, so I guess in short, it was a combination of just, like, after writing 40 episodes, <laughs> picking my favorite seven and then tailoring it to my favorite characters, if that makes sense. Yeah. And as far as, like, the comic goes, they were, originally, they were monologues. So I'd written them to be, the angel speaking there he would never hear or be therapist. Um, and so then I decided that, you know, it would be better to play off of someone. Um, I thought a therapist could be a lot of, a, like, really funny to be, um, have comic relief or comedic relief. And so anyway, when you, when you take monologues and add a whole character to them, some of them end up being, like, just different ones depending on, like, what it needed or, like, what was funniest or, or appropriate. And so that's, and I feel like in script form, they were all one to three pages. Um, and then depending on the way that we shot them, they ended up being longer or shorter um, in post. So yeah, so I guess it's more like happenstance as far as how, why the lengths are so different. But yeah, it was a lot of just like, what's like, I'm really passionate about, you know, like the, like the plight of, 
just like dark skinned black women and how we are portrayed in the media and like they're always disenfranchised and it's just when it comes to like desire and, and love and romance and things like that. And so it was important for me to see um, women that I thought looked like just beauty and being able to like glorify that, which is kind of where the aesthetic came from, which is why they have an eye but like why the therapist is also like portrayed, you know, the, why the angels portrayed like a dark skinned black woman. I just don't feel like we see that very often. And it'll be really important for me to like, if we're in heaven, it's like heaven, like, when I'm talking to my team about it, heaven is neither in the past, present, or future it is. And so I kind of like that gave so much freedom to, to not be bound by like earthly style or aesthetics, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if answers the question. Oh, no, <laughs> um, no. It, but, yeah, it, it, it's about the yeah. development. Yeah, it, it does, and that's interesting what you said as far as the dark skin women because, you know, I noticed that about it as far as their even their relationship with the way that they interacted with each other. Like, it wasn't any, like, uh, jealousy or anything like that, even though the, you know, the therapist was her senior, like, it didn't seem like she would had that put that over her. And there was an understanding, you know, and empathy that she, you know, was able to display on the later episodes as well when she started saying that, you know, I, I, maybe we could, you know, keep the name and, you know, if that's what makes you happy yeah, now I that I understand that, you know, where it is that you came from. I mean, absolutely. It's, just, it's all about respect, right? Like, you know, Raz really respects Dr. Haniel. Or, uh, she, she, she respects her just by ways of, like, she's an archangel and she's you know, God has placed her with her. Um, I think that she takes her a while to kind of like really like say, that, oh, you're really good at your job. But I think there's like a general, a genuine and general respect there, and, and vice versa. Like they don't, they both don't see eye to eye. But I, I imagine I, that our that our world would be better if had like a general respect of one. Oh, we're, we're recording. <laughs> so this is this is. Oh. But you're you're not in it. You okay, could just hear your voice. You you don't even have to move that. It's like literally at Kenyo's shoulder. Oh, okay, cool. So we can hear everybody, but... Hey. So this is... Hmm? So yeah, so this is, this is my idea, because I... I uh, anyway, this so is my idea. I want to... Uh, no, they know that you like to pretend that you're healthy by eating vegetables <laughs> shaped like... I mean, potato chips shaped like vegetables. <laughs> that was seven grams of fat. Yeah. That was fine. That's true. Let me close this. Just thirty percent less fat. No preservatives. Okay. So um. Yeah, it was fine. That was a great choice. So I'm gonna kind of steer a little bit of a conversation around these three ideas, and I'm gonna Boom. turn this around so that people can kind of see what's going on, and then I kind of want to use it to. Ooh. Um, I want to focus right now because right now you're doing some stuff. So I'm gonna do like a little bit of this kind of maybe like actually I don't know it might all be integrated, but maybe like 15 minutes of this where it's just like discussion and then like <coughs> for like 15 minutes because I want this to be like informational. This is just an idea that I had. Would be to do to talk about like your specific like some of the stuff that you're doing. Cool Specifically, that way we can apply it to like a structure and then see what happens. And then if it, you know, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to skip a lot of what I was going to say. So we're recording? Yeah. Great. Hi, guys. I'm hey. Kenyo. And uh, this is, um, I think, actually, no strange intros. We're just going to go with the supernatural intro. Today is a special day, okay? Because today, very intentionally, I want to accomplish sharing some super great information um, on an entrepreneurial level that has never been seen the world over. And I know that's kind of like big terms, um, but if Donald Trump can say what he says, I think that's just where. Anyway, that's getting cut I out. I, don't, we're not doing I thought we were not doing strange intros. Yep. In never mind. Okay, so this 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 video today, the specific goal is not to talk about Donald Trump, but is to give you a super cool um, level up in what the 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 feeling of being an entrepreneur is and having that lifestyle, but also just being a person, you know, and then really emphasizing why um, I um, some of the core concepts behind Project Forward. Yeah. You know what I noticed? Never mind. I was going to do a little detour where I talk about Elon Musk. It's not really important right now. 
pre-typing your stuff because you like change your mind at the last minute a lot. I feel like when I change my mind though, at least they get a couple snippets so they can follow it for a couple of seconds. Is that not what happens? Or it's just confusing? So the rest... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about three main tenets of entre like the entrepreneurial lifestyle, time, attention, and energy, okay? And um, uh, balancing these three different things are super key in order to building, I think, a sustainable lifestyle for yourself. And I think we all do it in different ways. And, and um, me, Kenyo, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I run Project 4. That's my, um, you know, great thing. And, and I'm also a poet, right? First and foremost, I'm a poet. And I've been writing poetry a lot longer. So um, for me, there's like a really big difference in um, the, the levels of skill that I operate. Um, so I think um, it, it's still at a really cool place where as we're learning, we can kind of share some information at the same time. And um, that's kind of the goal um, with, with rest. Because nobody's a, a pro here. Um, I am a pro poet. I'm probably, as far as poets go, in the world right now, You're un pro level. Un unofficial level, top 15, I think I'm in there. Okay. 15 uh, to 20 again, but okay. I mean, okay. Only other, at, at the top right now is, okay. Okay, I, I, I want to say, what's her name? Rome Milk and Honey. Oh, Rumi Kun. Well, oh, somebody just Ruby? gave that for my birthday. I've been reading it a yeah. lot. She's at the top. She kills it every single time. Number two is probably Lang Leave. And then all the other really good poets are dead. There's like three more people. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's me. So. <laughs> I love how Frankie's just like, I'm not, not going to touch it. I'm not entertaining this. We're not awarding this with laughs. We're not awarding this with anything. I think, it, okay, anyway, <laughs> that, that's not the point. Um, in the pursuit of really trying to figure out um, entrepreneurship, I found that um, there's like my natural skills. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit first about um, um, attention and then some competitions to talk a little bit about time and Frankie's gonna talk a little bit, um, no, actually, Mr. Composition is going to talk a little bit about energy. Frank is going to talk a little bit about time. She's ready and raring to go. Um, so I'm, for me, um, in order to do my, my, when I started Project Ford, my first strategy was to start with events, right? And um, what I discovered immediately after doing events um, and everything else. Hmm? I'm just excited. Oh. I'm like the hype man right back here with. Oh, like, cool. <laughs> what? I discovered yeah, I that it. events were the best way to maximize on time Gosh. spent marketing. Because why? Because it's like a website, but the people are inside the website. Inside the website? They live inside the website. Inception. It's great. a website inside of a website wow. inside of someone's head in a website. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so oh, I started creating I events and. <laughs> Um, so I, 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 I focused on a strategy of, of events and video, and that's what I decided to call Project Ford. And so for a year, I did this show called Go Live with Kinyo. And what I learned from that is that attention um, can be leveraged, um, but you also have to guard it. And so um, my main focus in doing anything is to leverage what little, little amount of attention that I have. That's my focus. And I realized that that means a number, like, kind of... I'm gonna say two main things. I know that one, um, there's a big deal in scheduling, so how I set up my day is gonna, and who I give attention to is gonna be really important. And for that, I have a strategy of focusing um, on a series of small groups, which is first my seven group, you know, if I can give a maximum amount of attention to them, I believe that the returns there are like, you know, 16x. And then there's a group of like 50 larger people, um, and I think that's your community who you're going after. And I think that if you can invest there, the return is like 4x or something like that. And then from whatever you can broadcast, that's just great. You get, you get a whole bunch of just different things and you can share with those people. But I learned that it's really important to um, focus on those. And while you're building, it's going to take a long time. I did a show every week for a year. Um, and. You know, let me not too much. It was a beginning show, but it was fun. But what I learned is that each one of those shows allowed me to um, get the attention of the guests who were on the show, and then it gave me a little bit of more attention in my little tiny pot, and that was useful for leveraging against other things. But I don't want to rant. That's like my summary of my attention life. I'm gonna let um, Frankie, because you're you're 
bursting at the horns. Give us a summary of your Ooh. how you manage time as an entrepreneur. So time is super important to me because I like am just I have like a lot of energy. I'm all over the place, and I know that if I don't have like schedules, I won't be as productive as I want to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm really big on like just um, I'm really big on setting goals and having a rollout after your goals. So I don't like it when I don't reach my goals. So. I do a lot of scheduling. I have wonderful sheets that I've made that um, I was gonna say that they're on the project board, but they're not. But they, they are. Oh, they wait. are. Are they not? I don't know if you put on the project board. No, I haven't. I haven't. Okay. I haven't. So maybe can you put these sheets on the project board? By the time side? this video is up, they're really, really well, so great sheets. They and are. Devtrol sheets too. Yeah, Devtrol has some sheets because like you'll get them at projectforward.tv slash work uh, workshops, oh. and then there's a little bar that says resources. Fantastic. Fantastic. Just so, okay, I'll, so I'll put a little link there too. Easy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so scheduling things out really allows you to see like how realistic is your goal because if your goal isn't realistic, then maybe it's not meant for right now, and that's just okay. And I like to really have a lot of clarity about the things that I step into, the things that I do, because um, I love doing it. I, I, if I have an idea and I'm excited about it and I want it to go well and I want it to be something that I can be proud of, then I'm going to need space and I'm, I'm going to need to use my time well. And that's why I use scheduling sheets so much. That's why I backwards plan, which means um, taking a look at like the event that you want to have, asking what do you want it to look like, how many people do you want to go, all that. And then asking yourself, okay, well, then what are the steps that I need? How many weeks do I need? What is the team that I need? So that you have, you're not just jumping in and running, which doesn't allow you to bring a level of excellence. He's actually teaching me a lot of fun stuff. Where do you think right now, Chantal, with like the, the way that you're doing stuff, where do you feel like your energy is being currently spent the most, whether it is, I mean, actually, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. sorry, you're about to change the question. Yeah, I was going to add to it, but. Keep it simple. <laughs> You're getting good at that. Yeah. You're noticing the awareness. <laughs> yeah. uh, right now, my energy is being spent right now getting the